From the East. From the East. House of Light. May wisdom dawn in us so we may see all things in clarity. From the North. House of Night. May wisdom ripen in us so we may know all from within. From the West. House of Transformation. May everything, may wisdom be transformed into right action so we may do what must be done. From the South, House of the Eternal Sun, may right action reap the harvest so we may enjoy the fruits of planetary being. From above, House of Heaven, where star people and ancestors gather, may their blessings come to us now. From below, House of Earth, may the heartbeat of her crystal core bless us with harmonies to end all war. From the center, galactic source, which is everywhere at once, may everything be known as the light of mutual love. Ayum Hunabku Eva Maya Ema Ho. Ayum. Hunabku, Eva Maya, Ema Ho. Ayum, Hunabku, Eva Maya, Ema Ho. Good morning and welcome to the day out of time. <laughs> Since we're out of time, we don't really have anything to worry about. <laughs> we're, we're really already way out there. You know, if you look at a map of the galaxy, you'll see, and you try to find where are we located, well, you know, we're very far out. <laughs> we're in something called the Orion Arm, which extends very far close to the edge of the galaxy, and we're in a little section out there which we call the Velotropa Sector. The Velotropa Sector is defined by the Pulsar Vela, which popped its cork about six to 11,000 years ago, and has been pulsing information streams to this planet ever since. Vela describes, the pulsar Vela describes a zone 6,000 light years in diameter, and our little sun, which is a star, is in the very center of that zone, Velotropa zone. This is what we refer to as the free will zone. We're in the very middle of that free will zone. Some places they refer to it as the quarantine zone. <laughs> <laughs> Careful if you go there. They tend to get in over their heads and do things that some places we call criminal trespass, but it's the free will zone, so everything is forgiven. This very important point. This is the day out of time. The day out of time exists on the 13 moon 28 day calendar, as I explained last night. Yesterday was the last day of the white spectral wizard year, the 28th day of the 13th moon. Tomorrow will be the, <clears throat> the first day of the first moon, the first day of the magnetic moon, the magnetic moon of purpose cosmic moon of presence. And between those two is the 365th day of the year, 
today when the Earth makes its 365th orbit before it completes one ring around the sun. We think about what a calendar is. A calendar is actually meant to measure the journey our planet takes as it makes its orbit around the star. And this, every time it makes one orbit, it completes a ring of time. So today we are completing a ring of time, the ring of time that was commemorated by the white spectral wizard. Tomorrow will be the beginning of another year, and that year will be the blue crystal storm. Okay. Some of you might know that uh, old song, uh, Crystal Blue Persuasion. <laughs> it's actually very appropriate. <laughs> if you go on our website, you can find the lyrics for it, and you'll see. It was a very, very utopian heaven-on-earth fantasy. <laughs> And that's what the blue crystal storm is opening to. Crystal is the tone of cooperation. It means that we dedicate in order to catalyze. We universalize our energy in order to create a great stream of spiritual abundance. This year, the white spectral wizard is completed on the day white spectral mirror. To stay white spectral mirror is the 258th out of 260 sacred galactic days. And the white spectral mirror every day has an affirmation. And everybody, everybody here should get their galactic signature. Later on, Juanique is going to uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, and every day has an affirmation. Today's affirmation for Kin 258, white spectral mirror. I dissolve in order to reflect, releasing order. I seal the matrix of endlessness, 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 with the spectral tone of liberation. I'm guided by my own power doubled. That's the affirmation for today. This day is no day of the week and no day of the moon at all. It is just that galactic day. That galactic signature is all that exists. From the point of view of the galaxy, that in terms of this planet, the more that the, the human belief system is able to understand this and celebrate this day out of time, the more the galaxy, from the central core of the galaxy, the more it can send pure beams of light and love energy to our planet. That's the meaning of this day, because we suspend third dimensional time. We just suspend third dimensional conventions and beliefs on this day, so we can receive the spectral bath of the galactic center known as Hu Nab Ku, one giver of movement and measure. It is to receive that pure spectral bath of love, light, energy from the central core of the galaxy that the day out of time exists. That's why it's so important to be on this new calendar. You don't have a day out of time in the old calendar. You don't have any time at all. <laughs> but this, this is the day out of time. When we receive the spectral love light energy bath of Hunab Ku, the central core of our galaxy, that love light energy stream is coming to us right now. And it bathes the whole planet. And it, be, it, it can come here because there's enough of a belief system that opens the mental field to receive this. And the more people who understand this every day out of time, then that great beam of light comes clearly right through this planet because we say we suspended third dimensional time today, only fourth, fifth dimensional time enters. And when that comes in, it washes us clean. It bathes us in pure galactic love light spectral energy. And it washes us clean. So we have this day 
for we can commemorate and dedicate ourselves to galactic freedom, to living the life of galactic freedom. When people say, what will happen? What kind of life will there be when we are on in the natural time in a harmonic standard of 13 months and 28 days? What kind of life that will be is the life of what is called galactic culture. Galactic culture is a life and culture free from all the constraints that bog us down in materialism. Free, ultimately, to be without nations, to be without passports, to be without the institutional binds, to have only our contract with ourselves and with the Supreme Creator. That's the only contract that's valid. So that's what we celebrate on this day. And this is the day when <clears throat> we dare put forth and dream our highest dreams and dream our highest visions. This day is being, has already been celebrated in multiple festivals in Japan, including a major festival on Mount Fuji. Throughout Russia and Lake Baikal, huge festival happening there. Moscow, St. Petersburg, the Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Israel, Yugoslavia, the big groups there now, po Poland, across Europe, Spain, Great Britain, South America, everywhere in South America, from Patagonia to Medellin, Colombia. Sao Paulo, Brazil is having probably the largest day out of time festival with millions of people. The city of Sao Paulo has recognized the day out of time as an official holiday. It joins about 80 other cities in Brazil that recognize the day out of time as an official holiday to celebrate peace through culture. That's the other name for this day, the International Peace Through Culture Festival. Because we believe that the only way there will be peace is the advancement of human culture and a human cultural exchange. That's why we say time is in money, time is art. So we celebrate time is art. And then across this country, Washington, D.C., all the way to the West Coast here, that we have many other celebrations. <clears throat> so this is the day where we join with all the people in the rest of the world. And what we have one common vision, because we say, if the people have a vision, they will live. If the people have no vision, the people will perish. So the people need to have a common vision. And we have found that that common vision is the rainbow, as we saw yesterday. And I would remind you that all miracles come from God. If we are in alignment with the divine will, then miracles will be granted. We have nothing to do with them. We are instruments of peace. And if we remain open as instruments of peace, we will experience miracles. In the, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse, beginning about verse 13 to about verse 17, when Noah gets out of the ark after the flood, and he sees a rainbow in the sky, and God says, that rainbow is my covenant with the earth and all of its creatures. This is the meaning of the rainbow. We are all children of the rainbow, which means that we are children of that covenant that God made in front of Noah with the earth and all of its creatures. It's a very important passage in the book of Genesis. And God says that this sign of my rainbow is my promise to you that the earth will never be destroyed again by a deluge. We still got the fire next time to worry about. <laughs> That's why we practice what we practice. But he said, 
the God said, the earth will never be destroyed by another deluge, and this will be my covenant, and you shall know it. And every time you see it, you should remember, this is the covenant I have made with the earth and with all the creatures of the earth. We are all children of the rainbow. And the rainbow is the common vision. Everyone recognizes the rainbow. Everybody understands the rainbow is that etheric portal, visible but invisible. You can't touch it. You try to grab it and it's gone. Look for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and you get there and the rainbow is over the next valley. It's a pot of spiritual gold that's waiting for you at the end of that rainbow. So the common vision we have is the vision of the rainbow around the earth, that we will put a rainbow around the earth. So everybody who is celebrating this day of time has this common visualization of the rainbow around the earth. Did we get the uh, uh, overhead or something like that? Yeah, can we get that? Uh, pull the screen down. Is this So, just to make this easier for us, this is uh, the Rainbow Bridge visualization. This is the, the full, complete Rainbow Bridge visualization. This was produced by um, the, in Brazil. In Brazil, they gave away a million pocket calendars this year. <laughs> and they were able to, to um, get major articles in the leading New Age magazines and were able to put free calendars in all those magazines so people got it. And one of the, one of the images that's circulating is... Now you see it? Now you see it. This rainbow is a very etheric thing. <laughs> that's why you can't... You can't grab it. <laughs> there, okay. Okay. So this is, the, we started visualizing this rainbow back in, um, oh, about eight years ago. We had something called the First uh, Planetary Congress of Biospheric Rights in Brasilia. And we began to visualize the rainbow there. And of course, at the very last day, at the very last minute of that, five-day event at five in the afternoon, everyone said, look out the window, and of course, there was the rainbow. Okay. This prophecy of the rainbow. So we began to do this visualization there, and we'll do it here. It's easy to do. You have to just place, first of all, place the earth in your heart. Just, we all just sit up and really focus on this. What you're looking at here is what you'll be having in your heart. At first, you see it looks like there's a lot of details. Okay. So here we see the earth. Yeah, here we see the earth. Okay. Now, you may not know this, but the center of the earth is actually an octahedron. It's an octahedron crystal core. This was discovered by seismologists in about the time of the harmonic convergence in 1986 and 87. They found out that at the center of the Earth is a large octahedron iron crystal core. An octahedron is an a eight-sided figure, geometrical figure, one of the five platonic solids. Four, and you can visualize it so at the center, you've got the earth at the center of the earth, you're, gonna, you're placing an octahedron. You can visualize an octahedron. The top has two red and two white sides, and the bottom has two blue and two yellow sides. Okay, so this is all about the power of visualization. Like I said, when we move out of the seven years of middle time fully into the new time, we're going to be developing our paranormal telepathic powers. And as you know, the base development is the power of visualization. If you can see it, 
you can create it. You can see it, then it's a part of the belief. So you have the earth, and the center of the earth is an octahedron, and it has two red and two white sides on top, and two blue and two yellow sides on the bottom. Now in this octahedron, I'm going to give you the whole deal, in this octahedron is what's called a time molecule. <laughs> The time molecule. A time molecule is what keeps the Earth in time. And a time molecule consists of four figures that are all the same. And you can imagine, visualize now, you can see a figure that looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Okay. It's got, four. I got a white one on, on one side, a yellow on this side. This, is the gra these are, this holds the gravitational field in time. It has a red one of these up here and a blue one of these down here. This holds the, the axis of the Earth in time. Now, if you really want to get into it, the red spins one direction and the blue spins the other direction. Keeps things in balance. You don't want a pole shift, do you? The human mind can prevent the pole shift. It can help stabilize the planet. It can help stabilize the planet by the power of visualization. So this, what I'm giving you here, is actually a telepathic technology. So you've got the Earth in your heart, inside of, your, inside of the Earth at the core is the octahedron, with two red, two white sides above, two blue and two yellow sides below. On its vertical axis is a red time atom above, a blue time atom below, gravitational, a white time atom, and a yellow time atom. Each of those time atoms just consists of seven points. Like if you had a hexagon and drew the points and then put one point in the center. It's all power of creative visualization. If you can hold that visualization, you can see it's there, so it's, that's why I placed this here, so you could actually see what we're visualizing. And then you'll see that running down through the center is like a double helix DNA strand, because there's two flows, a positive and a, and a negative flow, that go from the North Pole and the South Pole, and the South Pole to the North Pole. Okay. So that's, that's, the, that's the etheric structure of the Earth's rainbow body. Just like we have a structure with our system of chakras, so the Earth has its etheric rainbow body structure. So once you visualize that, now we have, we visualize the Earth is in the center of my heart. In the center of the Earth is an octahedron core. What animates that octahedron core is a time molecule. It has Two time, two time atoms on the axis, a red and a blue. Two time atoms on the gravitational plane, a white and a yellow. And the, the energy, the positive negative energy that goes, that connects to the North Pole and the South Pole runs through it like a DNA strand. You can visualize that. If you can learn, <clears throat> if you can learn computer programming or auto mechanics, you can visualize this. <laughs> This is telepathic technology. Once you visualize that, then from the center of that, of that core, streams of light go north and south, go along that vertical axis. Those streams of light go to the North Pole and to the South Pole. When those streams of light reach the poles of the Earth, they hit the electromagnetic field. Now we know that in the North Pole we have the phenomenon called the aurora borealis, the northern lights, and at the South Pole we have the phenomenon known as the aurora australis, the southern lights. That means that there's a lot of electrically charged particles at both those places, at those poles. So when this stream of light hits those electrically charged particles, it creates streams of rainbow light. You can see those, if you've seen those auroras, or maybe you've seen what they call these sun dogs in the sky. 
That's also these charged particles. We're just going to take, what our telepathic technology is going to take all those, all those charged particles and put them into very orderly streams and connect the streams from the North Pole with the streams coming from the South Pole to create a rainbow bridge. Now when you create the rainbow bridge, because of the nature of the poles, you have one part of the bridge goes around one side of the Earth and 180 degrees opposite another stream creates the other part of the bridge on the other side so you end up having something that looks like this. This is the rainbow bridge visualization and the meditation. Now you want to put that in your heart. So you want, once again, in your heart is the earth. You can see it, how beautiful and blue it is turning on its axis. And within the earth, there's the octahedron crystal core. The octahedron crystal core is animated by what's called a time molecule, which consists of four time atoms. Each is seven points. The red one above on the, on the north polar axis, the blue one below on the south polar axis, the white one on the right on the gravitational plane, the yellow one on the left on the gravitational plane. Double helix type strand of the positive and negative energy flows going north and south and south and north, run through that, connecting it, and then whoosh, streams of light go from the center up the one axis to the north and down the other axis to the south pole. When it reaches the poles, the light streams into two rainbow arcs from each pole that connect and create the rainbow bridge. The earth revolves slow, the bridge remains constant and the earth revolves within it. This is the rainbow bridge where that rainbow is around the earth. That is the manifestation of peace, inviolable peace. Once that rainbow is in place, it will never go away. It's the Earth's constant. It's what will make the people who are looking at us from outside the Velotropa sector say, I think it's safe to go back there now. <laughs> we want it. We want those people. We know they're out there. We photograph their ships and we talk to them telepathically, but they still haven't landed on the White House lawn. <laughs> but they will once we got the Rainbow Bridge. They say, okay, they got it. They know how to create peace. This is creative peace. So you visualize that. You hold that visualization. This is God's covenant. The earth is in this, and keep that. You can flash this visualization whenever you want. Whenever you want to feel at one with the earth and you want the earth to be at peace. This is the beginning. The earth is in your heart. We are of the earth and the earth is in us. Just as we are on the earth, the earth is in us. The earth is in your heart. It's got the crystal core, the four time atoms, the positive negative energy flows, the streams of light, and the rainbow bridge that comes arcing out from both poles and connecting both poles like this. You can visualize this anytime you want. You can hold this visualization right now for a few minutes and just feel nothing but peace and feel this is the vision when we reach the journey's end of this cycle in 2012. This is the vision of the earth at peace. That this will be a demonstration that the human beings have been able to do something far more powerful than the atomic bomb. Put a rainbow around the earth. If we could create the atomic bomb brighter than 10,000 suns, which is pure destructive energy, we can create something of a positive magnitude even more exciting, and that's a rainbow around the earth. Our brains are electronic. We have electronic charges. We are in resonance, if we so choose, with the electromagnetic field. If we have a resonant image and 
vibrate that with the electromagnetic field, then we can holographically cause that image to impact the field and to create this rainbow bridge. This is telepathic technology. This is what we can do. We can do this. This is the day out of time. This is the time to dream this. Next year at the day out of time, we'll gather in even larger circles and the meditation will become stronger. And we will do this until 2012 and then we will do the miracle. With God, all things are possible. All things. If you can see it in your heart, see it in your mind's eye, and hold it and make the visualization ever more clear. This, we'll have this out on the web so you can download it. And you can have that there. And you can visualize that. And know that this is the common visualization. This is the vision. The people will not perish with this vision. The people will actually know that this is one manifestation of the second creation. It says that the old heaven and the old earth will pass away and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. This is the second creation. God is compassionate and allows this knowledge to be revealed at this time so that we can begin to become empowered and participate in the second creation. This is the manifestation of that, the resurrection in time. The new resurrection is the resurrection in time. The old corrupt garment is the old time. And we shed the old time, the old corrupt garment, like a snake sheds its skin. And we are resurrected and regenerated in the new time. And in the new time, our powers are restored to us. And because we are one, planetary species now and we know where we are on this planet, all of us, we can create a planetary phenomenon together. And this is that planetary phenomenon. This is the rainbow bridge. We call it the circumpolar rainbow bridge because it goes around the poles. This is the vision that we're working for, and this is, for, this is the vision of what is possible, and this is the vision of what we will create. So please hold this in your hearts. And just as you see that there, when you want to complete, if you hold that visualization and you want to complete it, then extend the light from the earth you got the earth here and the rainbow around. Then extend the light from the earth in the north pole to your crown chakra and your south pole to your root chakra. And then do the same thing to your aura. Place the rainbow around your aura. And then, and then that, that is how to complete the visualization. And you too are a walking rainbow. <laughs> Okay, that's the rainbow visualization, the rainbow meditation. Is that Fantuzzi back there? Hey man, good to see you here. We'll be having you up in a little while. He's Mr. Rainbow, so. <laughs> but if Fantuzzi's not here, how can my rainbow rap be true? <laughs> but he's here. Good enough. Um, I'm going to do one other thing, and then I'm going to ask Sonny Reina, who's my brother, just to maybe sing a song. Okay, he's a Yaki chief. 
and uh, known Sonny for a while. And then after Sonny, we'll have Juanique. We'll talk about a little bit about the uh, back to the heavens, <laughs> the cosmic celestial realm where I feel so at home. <laughs> Just a stranger passing through here, you know. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's been a trip. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm almost over, but hey, we're going to make it, so. <laughs> uh, after Sonny, I was saying, then Juanique will be presenting a little bit about uh, how important it is to find your galactic signature <laughs> and know who you are. I'm a blue spectral monkey, and uh, do you know what your signature is, Sonny? No, kid, Mr. Starman, let's re-decode him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Juanique will be talking about that, and then we're going to have Fantuzzi um, wrap up this session in his inimitable rainbow manner. Oh, blue crystal monkey, you and Helena Petrovna Bolovatsky. <laughs> you probably like that. <laughs> So, before we, uh, I'll have Sonny just, to, he'll, he'll sing some songs, um, but I just want to do one more thing, and that's with regard to this day out of time, and let's just offer up a kind of uh, collective prayer here for universal forgiveness. Because yeah. as I said, on this day out of time, we suspend our third dimensional beliefs, our third dimensional conditionings, so we can receive the pure, love, light, energy, spectral beam from the Hunab Ku. And when that pure love, light, spectral beam energy bathes our planet, the Hunab Ku is totally impartial. The love, light beam bathes you and me like it bathes Osama bin Laden and George Bush. It bathes all of us. It bathes the ones we love and the ones we hate. And it, so, we are all on a path of unity. We are all coming from source and we are returning to source. And so, on this path, the only reason religions and spiritual traditions exist is to help us remember that we want to go to unity. And that's why all the great teachers teach universal forgiveness. Forgiveness for all humankind, every single creature. Every last one of them. And that begins with forgiveness of ourselves. We must go deep within and forgive ourselves. If there's something we're holding on to, if there's some aspect of ourselves that we're not being honest with ourselves about, if we're not telling ourselves the truth about ourselves, let's go in and forgive that right now. If there's something we did that we never quite got over or we think someone may be holding against us. Let's forgive ourselves right now. It's only our, our own minds that is holding ourselves down, that is keeping us from fulfilling our f total potential. If there's something that we feel impoverished about, Let's forgive ourselves about that right now. Because if you can forgive yourself and see yourself whole, you can see God and God can see you very clearly. You, wanna, you want to be able to see God fully, forgive yourself completely. Doesn't matter how many times you did this, or how many times you did that. If you're there with people you hurt, forgive yourself. People that you didn't do righteous by, forgive yourself. Because now, in this moment, everything is perfectly clear, everything is lucid. We are living in the moment of pristine, primordial, innocent awareness. That's all that exists anyway. 
The grass doesn't have any thoughts of good or bad, nor do the clouds or the air. So let's forgive ourselves right now and go into the state of primordial innocence, of primordial unborn innocence. And once we've forgiven ourselves, then we can see that we are looking at the face of God. Whatever it is we're looking at, whatever it is we're seeing, we're seeing the face of God. And if we can forgive ourselves, then if there's someone that we haven't forgiven, let's forgive them. If there's someone that we have a grudge against in any kind of way whatsoever, Let's forgive them. We want to create a heart and a soul that has no blemishes, that is free. Does anyone that you feel that you could not tolerate or ever want to see or talk to again, just drop it. <laughs> you may not ever see or talk to them again, but it won't make any difference. It won't help if you have the attitude that you never want to see or talk to them again. <laughs> Because that's creating a shadow on your soul. To create the rainbow bridge, we have to be pure. To sustain that visualization and manifest it as a telepathic projection, we have to be pure. We have to forgive all those who we say, oh, they don't understand me. <laughs> Forgive them. We don't need poverty consciousness and we don't need victim consciousness. We just want to be free. So let go of all those kinds of thoughts about other people, whoever they may be, and, and then extend out and ask for their forgiveness as you forgive them. But whether they forgive you or not, you forgive them. And you forgive them for not forgiving you. Forgive everybody and then expand out. If people in the world you think are doing bad things, forgive them. It's not going to do any good for them if you, if you start to hate them too. It's not going to break the cycle of violence. If you think that you should have a bad attitude towards them too, forgive them. As Christ said on the cross, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. We have to remember that. The biggest, the biggest veil that exists is the veil of ignorance. And everyone suffers from that to some degree or another. We have to begin to dissipate that veil, and they dissipate that veil with the divine wisdom of universal forgiveness. Whoever it is, whatever they may be doing, whatever they look like on television, whatever the news tells you about them, forgive them. They know not what they do. There, but for the grace of God, go I. Remember that. If you were born someplace other than where you were born, what would you maybe be doing? This is a very, this world needs the help of all the light workers it can get. In a country like Zambia today, the life expectancy is 32.4 years because of AIDS. Life expectancy of a child in Norway is 78.9 years, over twice that of a child in Zambia. We live in a world of injustice, of oppression, of ignorance. We must forgive. We must begin to say, we cannot hold other people in shackles for debt. Is we must forgive all debts so that everybody is free. We want to get to the day out of time when all the debts of the world are forgiven and everybody is able to start on a clean slate at the same place, at the same time. And let's see where we get then. 
forgive the debt. Forgive the people in the International Monetary Fund for thinking they have to hold the debt. <laughs> forgive them all. But let's forgive all the debts, let's cancel the debts, and let's put our mind to that. So that some people aren't held responsible their whole lives for something they never did. <laughs> Universal forgiveness is a great step on the ladder of spiritual advancement. We are all here to advance in stages. Some of us move quicker than others. Some of us seem to be more advanced than others. The only, the only degrees that exist, the only hierarchy that exists is, is that of spiritual intelligence. We all want to evolve mentally and spiritually and the, the very, very, very bottom base step to get anywhere out of where you are, beyond where you are, is universal forgiveness. Universal forgiveness is an affirmation of the unity of existence. Universal forgiveness is the first step on the ladder of spiritual ascent towards universal cosmic consciousness. There can only be universal cosmic consciousness when there is a state of universal forgiveness and we can realize our oneness. We can do this, we can create miracles. We can create the miracles when we all have enough spiritual power that we know exactly what to do to free the prisoners. <clears throat> we have enough spiritual power to, so we know what to do when we surround the bomb factories. We have enough spiritual power so we know what to do. <clears throat> we surround the people who make landmines. That's the kind of spiritual power we're looking for so that we're not disempowered by what goes on in the world. It's up to us. And it starts here. And it starts with universal forgiveness. So, so let's everybody just hug everybody else for a minute and Sonny will come up and do some songs. <laughs> <clears throat>